Hello, God bless you. Welcome to Daily Bread and Water, where we take a daily look at a Bible verse, because it's like we need that physical food and water for our physical bodies. We also need that spiritual bread and water for our spiritual bodies. And how we feed our spiritual bodies is by reading the Bible. We we're just giving you an appetizer today. Um, just like you need to eat when you feel hungry, we also need to feed our spiritual body. So we're just giving you a verse of the day, appetizer. It's up to you to complete the meal. Read the Bible for yourself. Last week, we started a new series in our sermon, Sunday sermons about Jesus says Moses wrote of me. And we go through looking at prophecies in the Moses' writings that have to do with Jesus. And I pray that you listen to those videos and that you, I pray you get something out of them, and I know you will, because God always reveals something new to us all the time. That's why it's important to read the Bible for yourself. You get more insight uh, out of what the Word says. And today we're going to discuss the scriptures that kind of launch that new series we're in. We're going to be in John chapter 5. We're going to read 46 and 47. So let's get in the word. And it says, For had ye believed Moses, ye would have believed me, for he wrote of me. Jesus is talking to the Pharisees here. People who knew the Bible like the back of their hand. Moses writing, they knew. They could quote it. But they didn't believe that Jesus was a fulfillment of these Old Testament scriptures, the promised Messiah that God said he would bring. And he said, For had you believed in Moses, you would have believed in me, because Moses wrote about me. Let's continue the next verse, which says, But if you believe not his writings, how shall you believe my words? So he's saying here, if you believe Moses, you would have believed in me because Moses wrote about him. He says, but if you believe not Moses' writings, how shall you believe in Jesus' words? You know, for me, this is a interesting set of verses here because I love to study the Word of God. I love to cross-reference. When I see... Moses wrote of me. I want to know what scriptures Moses wrote about Jesus. And that's why we started that sermon series last Sunday. Is the Moses wrote of me series. We're in part two which will be later on this afternoon. I pray that you listen to it. I know you'll get something out of it. And, I, you know, I also like to, like, when I'm reading the book of Matthew, and it says, as spoken by the prophet. Matthew does that a lot in his writings. And I love to cross-reference them. I love to know what prophet said this and where it's at in the Bible. So that always gets, that's always an interest to me. I always get excited to look this stuff up. So when I was thinking about this, Moses wrote of me, statement that Jesus made. I just felt led to want to bring out some of what Moses wrote about Jesus. And I will continue it for as long as the Lord allows. And I, I, pray, you get, I pray you enjoy it. We do have the updated version of our sermon slides with visuals that I pray will bless you because I'm a visual person. For me, sometimes seeing something kind of makes it stick a little bit better. A good example is the Jesus the Soul Shepherd video that I told you all about from Expedition Bible. You know, just seeing that and hearing all the scriptures about Jesus being the shepherd and all that, as we see sheep and shepherds and things, it really brings to life what that means to me. 
So that's what I try to do with these pictures and the slides. I try to put some a picture to some words and I pray that it helps you to kind of understand a little bit better. what I'm trying to convey about Jesus to you. And I hope you enjoyed this message today. I hope you got something out of it. I hope that you be a Berean, search the writings of Moses for yourself. See what you can find of Jesus in there. Jesus is from cover to cover. And all of it's good. Because it all points us to our Savior. You know, we all have this void in our life. Some call it a God-shaped hole. A missing puzzle piece. You try to fill it with everything that the world has to offer. Sex, drugs, alcohol, money, friendship, popularity, houses, car. Nothing can fill that void. Only God. That's why they call it a God-shaped hole. That void is there because we all sin. We all fall short of the glory of God. There is none of us that is righteous. No, not a one. That void, that sin is there because we live in a fallen world. You see, before sin entered the world, God walked with man. Because of the fall, sin entered this world, and sin separated us from God. And not only did sin separate us from God, sin creates a valley between God and man. And with each sin, that valley gets deeper and wider. Now the only way to atone for that sin and for God to fill that void in your life is by the shedding of blood. As you see it says, without the shedding of blood there is no forgiveness of sins. In the Old Testament they would use the blood of an animal sacrifice. The animal sacrifice was a temporary bridge to God. Once they sinned again, they would have to offer another animal sacrifice. Why? Because as we sin, that valley gets deeper and wider, which causes that bridge to collapse. There's nothing that can bridge that gap between God and man. Not an animal sacrifice. Not your works. Only Jesus and what he did on the cross. Think of it this way. Your, our sins put us in a jail cell. Where we await our trial. Then suddenly our cell door opens. The jailer says we're free to go. Someone paid our bail. That was Jesus. Jesus paid our bail. If you don't accept Jesus' free gift, his get-out-of-jail-free card, and you stay in that jail, and the jailer opens the door and says you're free to go, someone paid your bill, but you're relying on your own works. So you stay in that cell, thinking that you can get into heaven your own way, saying, no, I'm good. I'm a good person. I can get myself out of here. Well, I'm here to tell you that you can never be good enough. But you denied that free ticket out of that jail cell. But you can still escape the jail cell. However, if you let sin continue to create that valley which gets deeper and wider, then you will 
be eternally separated from God which means hell because one day that ground is going to give away that valley is going to get so deep and so wide that you will be cast into hell you see the punishment for our sin is death and if you don't trust in Jesus to fill that God shaped hole in your life then hell will be your eternity hell is a very real place it's no joke Hell is not about rock concerts and orgies. Hell is a literal place of suffering, torture, and torment, day and night forever, with no relief in sight. The Bible describes it as weeping and wailing and gnashing of teeth. I don't want you to go there, and Jesus doesn't want you to go there. You see, Jesus always existed. Jesus is God. Jesus left his throne in heaven. Jesus became flesh. He wasn't an angel. He wasn't a ghost. He wasn't a prophet. He was flesh and blood and bone, born of a virgin. He was fully God and fully man. He lived a perfect, sinless life. And to doubt any of this is to take away who Jesus is. And if you take away any of who Jesus is, then you turn Jesus into an ordinary person. If Jesus was an ordinary person like you and me, then we are still in our sins. Jesus came to die for us. Jesus suffered a brutal trial where he was beat, spit on, mocked. Jesus didn't fight back because this is why he came to die for us. At one point they put a purple robe on Jesus they put a staff or a reed in Jesus right hand they put a crown of thorns on his head they mocked him they knelt down saying hell king of the Jews then they spit on Jesus they took the reed and hit him on the head which drove those thorns deeper into his skull Jesus was beaten with a whip that was separated at the end into several strips of leather each strip of leather had several pieces of glass, bone, rock, metal, or whatever they could find to inflict the most damage. They hit him 39 times with this whip, but he had more than 39 whip marks. Each time Jesus was whipped, there were several strips of leather with added torture, ripping his flesh from his body. Jesus was beaten so bad that he was unrecognizable. Then Jesus carried his heavy cross to the crucifixion site, and he fell down under the weight of the cross at one point. Then Jesus' hands and feet were nailed to the cross. Jesus suffocated to death on that cross. Jesus' the only way that he could breathe was to push his body up that rough, unscented cross. Jesus would use his legs to push his body up, which would make the metal nail grind against the bones in his feet and rub his back against the rough and scented wood opening the wounds again just to allow his lungs to get air then Jesus was so exhausted that his body would collapse rubbing his back against the rough and scented wood again and once again opening the wounds Jesus nailed our sins to the cross with him Jesus shed that beautiful precious blood for us for our sins Jesus paid the sin that past present and future on the cross Jesus died and he was buried in the tomb for three days and three nights and he rose again proving that he was God because death in the grave had no power over him and Jesus ascended to heaven where he defends us much like a courtroom God is the judge Jesus is our defense eternity the devil is our persecutor the prosecutor tells the judge all of our sins as you see here in the picture he says you see what they did 
they're guilty. But Jesus, our defense attorney, tells the judge, those sins are stricken from the record. He paid those sins with his blood in full. Jesus paid the fine. Jesus paid the price for your salvation on the cross. Your salvation is a free gift from God. All you got to do is just receive this free gift Jesus gave you long before you were born. It's easy. We all mess up. We all miss the mark. We all sin. No one is perfect. The punishment for our sin is death and separation from God forever. No one can be saved by their works. But the good news is that Jesus died for us. Jesus took our place, suffered God's wrath for us, nailing our sins to the cross. Jesus paid God's price for our sin when he died on the cross. Our debt has been paid. We're free to go. Jesus paid our debt in full. When Jesus died, he purchased us, redeemed us, bought us back to him with his shed blood that he shed for us on the cross. God gave his son Jesus to the world to die in our place so that we do not have to die. Jesus truly is the only way to the Father because he was the only one who paid the price for you with his blood, with his life. Just like the animal sacrifice had to be completely perfect with no spot, no blemish, no defect. Jesus was a perfect sacrifice for us. Jesus died a brutal death. Jesus suffered God's wrath in our place. The punishment that we deserve for our sins was poured out on Jesus. Our sins, past, present, and future, died with Jesus on that cross. Our sins were nailed to that cross and Jesus' blood covered those sins. Jesus died to redeem or buy us back. And when we put our trust in Jesus, that he died for our sins, that he bought our free ticket into heaven, then Jesus builds a permanent bridge between God and man. Keep in mind that Jesus was sinless meaning that he was innocent of death. Have you ever taken the blame to protect someone? Maybe a sibling, a friend, a significant other, a classmate, co-worker? Say you and a younger sibling were playing when you were kids and the sibling broke something. So knowing you were innocent, you took the, bl the blame. This is what Jesus did for us. Like an innocent man wrongfully arrested, Jesus died for us because of our sin. We are guilty, and we deserve God's wrath. The wages of sin is death, but Jesus loves us enough that he came to die for us. Jesus put our sin on himself while he was on the, that cross. And because Jesus put up on our sin. Our sin died with Jesus on that cross. When we believe this, we are saved. And we put on Jesus' righteousness. Then when God looks at us, He doesn't see someone who falls short, who sins. When God looks at us, He sees His Son, Jesus. Because after we believe in Jesus, we put on Jesus' righteousness. And one day in heaven we will walk with God and we will see God and Jesus face to face. But you have to know who Jesus is in your heart. You have to have him in your heart. There is a big difference between knowing who Jesus is in your mind 
and having Jesus in your heart. Just knowing Jesus is like sending a celebrity a message on social media. There's a big difference between sending the message on social media and actually knowing that celebrity personally. Eating meals together, watching movies together, and just like that celebrity, there's a big difference between knowing Jesus intellectually and Jesus in your heart. Maybe you went to an altar, repeated a prayer. Maybe you didn't understand what you were saying or doing. Maybe you went to the altar just to please someone. But you left that altar and lived like the world, doing what you wanted, not caring what God wanted. You gave lip service saying that you know Jesus. You have knowledge of Jesus, but you did not have a relationship with him. Relationship means having Jesus in your heart, putting Jesus first. So you have to know him in your heart, believe in him, not just with your mind. Because you can know who he is and what he did. But it's when you have him in your heart, when you put Jesus first, when you communicate with him. That's when the difference between knowing Jesus and having a relationship with him. And just knowing who Jesus is and what Jesus did for us is like this. It's like me giving you a bottle of water. The bottle of water is in your hand and it's unopened. You're still thirsty because even though you're holding the bottle, you still have to do your part, open the bottle, and drink it. Jesus sacrificing the cross is like you holding the water bottle. You have to do your part. you got to believe in Jesus and what he did. When you have Jesus in your heart, you talk to him in prayer. You read his word, the Bible. You put Jesus first before your family, before your job, before your money, whatever it may be. Now you may not ever want to know Jesus because you heard someone in a church or a Christian say do this or don't do that. And it makes you feel like I don't want to be a part of that. Well if you have gotten to this point in this video then you are here for a reason. So forget all those do's and don'ts. Things you've heard before because religion and man will bind you in chains of doing this and not doing that. Religion is man trying to be good enough to get to God. But I'm not talking about religion. I'm talking about how you can be saved right here today. Religion will just put you in chains telling you what to do and not to do. But Jesus will set you free right now. God is not about do's and don'ts. Why? Because God knows that we can never be good enough. That's why when we believe in what Jesus did on the cross, we put on Jesus' righteousness. We can't do enough or not do enough. So forget all the do's and don'ts of religion. Don't miss heaven because someone offended you with do's and don'ts. Just remember Jesus is coming back to set up his earthly kingdom. The requirement to enter the kingdom is that we must be absolutely perfect and without sin. We like to think that one sin is not as important, not as bad as another. We think that a little white lie is not as bad as murder. Even a non-believer, if you witness to them, will say, that they're a good person, that they've never killed anybody. But God doesn't see our sin like that. God sees our sin equal. A white lie is an equal, equally as bad as a murder. What does that mean? It means that no one is without sin. No one. All of us face eternal judgment and separation from God. This is why we must individually receive Jesus into our life. 
as Lord. He is the only one who lived a perfect life and became the substitution for our sins. He rose from the dead proving that he was God because death and the grave had no power over him. He wants to save us from the penalties of our sin and give us eternal life. But we must individually receive him. This is what it means to believe in Jesus. And just as works do not get you into heaven, neither does just knowing who Jesus is. It's that simple. In fact, it's ABC simple. ABCs of salvation. A is for admit. Admit you're a sinner in need of a savior. Admit that you cannot do this on your own. You may get to that point when you are trying to fill that God-shaped hole. You come to the realization you can't do this on your own. That you need the Savior. You need help. Admit you need Jesus. B is for belief. Believe in your heart that Jesus is who he says he was. Believe that Jesus died for your sins, was buried, and that God raised him from the dead. Believe Jesus prayed to prosper for your sins. Believe that Jesus did that all for you. See, it's for call, confess. Call on the name of the Lord. Confess that Jesus is the Son of God. Confess that Jesus is Lord. Confess and repent of your sins. Just apply all that in some type of prayer. It comes from your heart. You want just take those ABCs of salvation and talk to God. Prayer is a conversation with God. And since God is present everywhere, you can speak to God aloud, you can write down a prayer, or you can just pray in your, in your head, in your thoughts. God will hear you. On the screen we have a sample prayer that you can say, or you can use your own words. And if you either say the ABCs of salvation or a sample prayer just as long as it's from your heart and you really mean the words then you will be saved because we are saved through faith in Jesus Christ it is a hundred percent free gift from God don't think you have to be good enough to somehow earn your way into heaven because you can't you need to repent, believe in Jesus, then you will be saved. Faith in Jesus is the key, and that key will unlock your eternity. You must have a personal relationship with Jesus. You are not alive by accident. You were created for a purpose. God didn't create you just to fill the earth with people. God has a plan for you. When God formed you in your mother's womb, he had a plan for your life. And when you accept Jesus' free gift of salvation, and you invite Jesus into your life, then God gives you a new heart. God begins to mold you into the person that he created you to be. Example is, say you want to build a house with Legos. When you dump the Legos on the table, much like you see this pile right here, it doesn't look like a house, does it? No, you have to snap the bricks together. That's how God is molding us into who he created us to be. God is mold, continually molding us. Just like you've got to snap each brick, God's continuing to mold us into who he created us to be. Because even though we're saved, 
we still sin, we still mess up. Because we're unfinished. Just like when you snap two bricks together. You still have to snap more bricks together to make a house. We're unfinished. God is still working on us. Jesus is coming soon. We can all see the signs that Jesus talked about happening worldwide. We can see the shadow of the tribulation getting closer and closer. And you don't want to be here for the hell that is coming. The tribulation is about to start. The tribulation is a seven year period of God's judgment on the earth with a mix of natural disasters and terrifying supernatural events. This world will get progressively worse over the next seven years of the tribulation. What the tribulation will actually look like, we do not know. And I do not want to be here to find out. And I pray that you're not going to be here either. And you have a choice right now. The easy way or the hard way. The easy way is to give your life to Jesus today. The hard way is to wait until after the rapture to give your life to Jesus. Why is it the hard way? Because you may have to die for Jesus. So your choice is to believe in Jesus now or to die for Jesus later. The choice is yours. Don't wait. Don't put Jesus off while you get to a point in time in your life where you feel like you're ready to come to Jesus, like you've accomplished something. Or you wait until you stop doing a certain sin. Maybe you want to stop drinking or smoking or gambling or whatever. Come to Jesus today. Give your life to Jesus today while you still have the opportunity. Because Jesus already paid the price. It's a free ticket that's waiting for you to enter into heaven. You have the opportunity today to turn to Jesus before it's too late. This is your wake-up call. It's still possible to get to heaven. Jesus is coming very soon. You don't have time to wait. Tomorrow this might be a day too late. So please turn to Jesus today. Well, I pray you got something out of this. If you didn't give God glory. Can't wait to see what the Lord has for us tomorrow. Hope you have a great day. We'll see you tomorrow, God willing, or maybe we'll see you in the clouds.